untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Boros Burn deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck features a new card with the Mystical Archives. Thanks to Lightning Helix, 2 mana to deal 3 damage to any targets and we gain 3 life. So great against any opposing aggro decks. Now there's a few ways we can build a burn deck in Historic and I've decided to feature 4 copies of Showdown of the Skulls as a powerful card draw mechanism that also adds plus 1 counters to our creatures. This gives us more ways to draw into our burn spells to finish off an opponent so we can maybe use the first couple burn spells to answer opposing creatures instead of only going face. And Showdown of the Skulls also synergizes very nicely with the Runaway Steamkin, the 2 mana 1 1 elemental saying whenever we cast a red spell if the Steamkin has fewer than 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, we can put a plus one plus one counter on the Steamkin and we can remove three of those counters to add triple red mana to our mana pool. So the Steamkin can potentially use those counters from Showdown of the Skulls to then generate additional mana which makes it easier to empty your hand and cast all the spells we've exiled with Showdown of the Skulls to potentially chain into multiple copies. So these two cards have awesome synergy. Now one card that I also tried in the Boar's Burn deck is Clever Lumomancer from Strixhaven. It is a one mana wizard and it does enable Wizard's Lightning which is great and it can sometimes deal a ton of damage as a one drop that gets plus two plus two whenever we cast an instant or sorcery. Doesn't have the best synergy with Runaway Steamkin since it's a white card. Also doesn't have the best synergy with Showdown which can enable prowess for Soulscar Mage but doesn't enable Magecraft since it only counts instants and sorceries. And the Lumimancer can also be a bit awkward if you have a lot of spectacle cards in hand like Skewer the Critics or Light by the Stage since you need to be able to cast those before the Lumimancer attacks and of course the Lumimancer not having any power means it can can't enable Spectacle by itself, so decided to go without a Lumimancer for this build. But if you don't play Showdown and Steamkin, I could see Lumimancer doing a lot of work as well. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana, we need some cheap creatures, especially wizards, to enable our Wizard's Lightning. So we've got the full play set of Gitu Lava Runner, one mana, one two, saying as long as there are two or more instant and or sorcery cards in our graveyard, Lava Runner gets plus one plus zero oh and has haste. So also great with our Showdown, as we can potentially play the Lava Runner after we exiled it, and then load a bunch of plus one counters on it with the second and third chapters to attack right away. Then we also have the full playset of Soulscar Mage, 1 mana, 1, 2 with Prowess, so it gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn whenever we cast a non-creature spell, including enchantments. And if a source we control would deal non-combat damage to a creature an opponent controls, put that many minus 1 minus 1 counters on that creature instead. So this can be very useful if we're up against a green creature deck, where the opponent's creatures are too large to die to a single burn spell, at the very least we'll be able to shrink those down. Then at 2 mana we've got Lightning Helix and Runaway Steamkin, and then we've got some Spectacle cards with a Light by the Stage, costing only a single red if we can enable Spectacle, meaning the opponent lost life this turn, and then we exile the top 2 cards of our library, and until the end of our next turn we may play those cards. So typically we want to cast Light of the Stage before playing our land for the turn, in case we exile 2 lands with Light of the Stage so we can still play both before they go away. And then we also have two copies of Skewer the Critics, which has Spectacle for single red, dealing three damage to any target at sorcery speed. And then four copies of Wizard's Lightning, which costs two generic mana less to cast if we control a wizard, and we've got eight wizards to enable it. And then we get to deal three damage to any target at instant speed. And then topping off our curve, four copies of Showdown of the Skulls, as a powerful card draw engine and way of putting more counters on our creatures. And of course, great with our Steamkin. Then we also get to play with Gigantha the Wellspring as our companion, giving us even more late game. And then the mana base consists of four copies of Ramana Pruins, which we can also tap and sacrifice alongside four mana to deal two damage to each opponent. So that also gives us a way to close out the game if we run out of burn spells. And then we've got six basic mountains and a whole host of red-white dual lands with Inspiring Vantage, Needle Verge Pathway and Sacred Foundry, which can all come into play untapped in the first couple turns. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Not the most exciting, but Lion of the Stage can help us find more goodies. Facing an Elf Tribal deck with turn one Shepherd. Shepherd's not a must answer right away, so we can save our Shock and play Lava Runner. We want to keep Shock to answer their Lords. Although Dwinnin's Elite is annoying. Steamkin a great draw. So now we want to find something like a showdown of the skulls to go over the top. 
Imperius Perfect, we can definitely shock. We kind of want to cast more spells before attacking. Although I don't think I want to kill any of the other creatures in play. So I could just shock Imperius Perfect, attack, line with stage, even though we miss out on a bit of damage here. Just to see what else we reveal. Alright, Lightning Helix, another light up the stage. So given that we have extra mana with Steamkin, I'm okay casting another light up here, since we're pretty likely to be able to cast all the spells we exile. Alright, another Steamkin I can also cast if I want to, which does seem worth it. And then we'll keep the Shock available for now. Or I could kill the Elite. Killing the Elite's also reasonable. Means I take less damage. If they have another Lord, we might end up taking quite a bit. And we should be able to keep the Shepherd from pumping the team. Another Elite. And a Sentinel, that's fine. Really hoping for a showdown of the Skulls here at some point. For now I can attack with probably everyone. And then I guess the most threatening creature in play right now is the Shepherd. Opponent might just take it. We'll see what happens. So yeah, opponent is willing to take it. We can Helix. Let's see if we Helix their face and Helix face again. That's 6 plus... Another 8, 14, 15, 16, so we'll put them to 1. So, 1 short of lethal. Don't have Ramana Prunes to finish them off. And we are potentially looking at a lot of damage on the way back with Shepherd, so I think we should just Helix the Shepherd. And then we'll hang on to the other Lightning Helix to potentially answer our Lord. And then probably just pass for now. Could also put Gigantha in hand. Which is also a reasonable play. Now we'll just pass. Keep more counters on my Steamkin. Alright, there's the Arch Druid, so that's something we might want to Helix at instant speed. Opponent attacks. And that should leave them dead on the way back. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. We've got a creature heavy hand, so we could definitely use a second burn spell, but I'm gonna keep. Turn one island pass. Let's get a lamp runner out there. Opponent could go end of turn Spectral Sailor and then suit it up, so maybe a reason to keep up Shock, but probably not worth it. Just hits us for one. So if they just pass, they could have any number of two mana counter spells, so Steamkin's unlikely to resolve. So I th think I just. Attack for one. And then play another Lamp Runner, keep up Shock. Can also kill a uh, Merfolk that they flash in here. I guess I don't need to play my land just yet. Also have the option of casting Light of the Stage. Alright, hit for one. Yeah, I'll keep up Shock here, I think. Opponent has a Brineborn Cutthroat. Do we want to shock that instead? We can block it. So could wait until the opponent's turn. 
And if they counter Shock, they're not countering Steamkin or Light Up, which are more valuable. So Sailor hits for one. That's fine. Spell Pierce to counter Shock, that's fine by me. Could hard cast Light of the Stage or could just go Steamkin, Lava Runner and pass. So let me move to Combat first. They don't do anything. Can't really afford to attack since we don't have a burn spell to punish them. Play Steamkin. Might get countered. And then do we tap out for Lava Runner or do we keep it to represent a burn spell to kill the Cutthroat? Probably just play the Lava Runner here. And then can hard cast Light of the Stage. Might be a bounce spell here, Brazen Borrower. Storm Tamer to protect our creatures and another Steamkin. Second Steamkin gets denied. Now if the Cutthroat grows above 3 toughness it's going to be a bit more difficult to kill. So it is doing a good job on defense. Another Lava Runner. So we can't light with the stage and uh, pay for Spell Pierce unless we cast Lava Runner first to use the mana from Steamkin. Although I suppose they can respond to the trigger from Steamkin. So that wouldn't necessarily work. Oh well, we'll go for it anyway. Just gonna be a lofty denial. Counter unless we pay 4 and we didn't have 4 mana. But now we can attack with a Steamkin. And do we send all the Lava Runners? We would be dealing 10 damage. And we lose a Lava Runner. Might be worth it, to be honest. And then I could put Jagalta in hand, but I wouldn't be able to cast it anytime soon. So we'll just pass. Opponent doesn't have the fastest clock since they're keeping Cutthroat back. Pillar of Flame. If I just were to attack with everyone, they block Steamkin. I can use the mana to activate Ramana Prunes. So 6 plus 2 is 8. And then we could finish them off with Pillar, although Storm Tamer can also counter the Pillar here. So it's a close call. But I don't hate an attack with everyone. Another cutthroat, sure. And they do trade for a lava runner. Fair enough. So we'll use the mana here to activate Ramana Prunes. And then just pillar their face right now, I believe. And they can counter with the Storm Tamer if they'd like. 
but then any 3 damage burn spell is lethal. Although if they go to 1, a Lava Runner attacking is also lethal, so they'll have to keep a lot of creatures on defense. Opponent does counter. It's gonna be a main phase opt, so opponent's digging. Puts a card on the bottom, plays a land so they can either activate Sailor or flash in Brazen Borrower. And they probably can't afford to attack anymore. Or they can try and close out the game with Cutthroat, leave Sailor back. It's an alternative play they have as well. Found a Steamkin, so not worth it to attack. Just play Steamkin Pass. And then if our opponent draws a blank, we could technically kill them on the ground next turn. If they don't keep Sailor back. So close game. Punt is also threatening lethal with a cutthroat, so they can start swinging with it and then we'll have to chump. Curious Obsession, we'll draw more cards. So now we're just gonna swing with Borrower, keep two creatures back. That makes sense. If they don't draw a counter, they're still dead to a burn spell here. Pillar of Flame, that does it too. Can just pillar their face, attack with everyone. Opponent could technically still draw with Sailor, but the best they can do is Spell Pierce, which we can pay for. I guess they could draw into another blocker, I suppose. But uh, yeah, we'll go for it. So our opponent needs to draw exactly another Spectral Sailor. And they didn't, and our opponent explodes. Alright, so very close game here against Mono Blue Tempo. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand's a little awkward since we don't have any creatures. We do have a lot of card advantage, and Shock can enable the first light of the stage. So I think I still keep. And then we'll wait until turn 2 to maybe Shock plus light up if we haven't drawn anything in the meantime. Facing a tapped Temple Garden. Yeah, I think we go for it. Could wait an extra turn to make it more likely I can leverage both cards from light of the stage. Especially relevant if we exile a showdown. But there's only three showdowns left and we have another light up in hand, so... Gotta try and find a creature here. Alright. Soulscar Helix is fine, so we can cast both the next turn. Opponent on Abzan, and the Hero of Precinct 1. Perfect target for Lightning Helix. And then we've got the Steamkin Showdown combo. Shovel. Shovel's kind of scary. And we can't easily attack into it. So maybe we cast a showdown. And then... Next turn, try and go off with our Steamkin. Could just hard cast Light of the Stage. Hoping to find a Wizard's Lightning. Which would be the cleanest solution. Before Shovel gets any value. Don't really want to expose Steamkin to Shovel. So... Yeah, close call. I think I just cast a showdown here. Alright, plenty of wizard slidings for next turn. So I don't even need Soulscar to survive necessarily. Thalia making our spells more expensive is a setback. Alright, so let's see here. I could play Steamkin, have three mana left, and then spend two mana shocking Thalia, put a counter on Steamkin, and then we can keep going off. So I think that's the play. And then I don't need white mana.
play a Lava Runner. And this counter doesn't have to go on Steamkin. And our opponent scoops it up. Yeah, we were going to be able to unleash all our burn spells, kill all the opponent's creatures, and then have a Lightwood stage for even more card advantage. So things were looking good. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. We'll need some white mana for Helix and Showdown. Turn 1 Thoughtseize, gonna have a look. Might go for the Soulscar or the Steamkin, depending on what removal they have. Takes the Steamkin. And did find our white mana right away. Yeah, let's just attack here, see what happens. And then play a white source anyway. Could have Helixed main phase for prowess. Not sure what matchup we're playing, so I'm gonna keep Helix as potentially an answer to a creature. Hypnotic Spectre, I like it. So we'll wait until our turn to kill this, to enable prowess. Pillar also works. Keep the instance available. Also reasonable to just Helix face now. Yeah. I'll play the Ruins so they don't have the information that we have a fourth land for showdown. And I don't think the one damage is going to matter in this matchup. So hopefully no second thought sees. Liliana's fine. The best thing about zombies is Kill Soulscar Mage. And we're just gonna cast a showdown before they make us discard it. Alright. Reasonable hits. Can play Lava Runner plus a second showdown next turn. Inquisition gonna clean out our hands since Liliana can make us discard too. And a Tiny Bones can draw the opponent to card in a turn. Alright, so our opponent's got a sweet discard tribal deck. Yeah, I think we wanna just Lava Runner Showdown and then Lava Runner can attack Liliana. Play this first to get the counter. And find more goodies. Tiny Bones chumps. And a Waste Knots is going to draw them a card after they make his discard here. Ooh, Inscription of Rune has removal too. So yeah, some good draws. Opponent's still in the game. So... I think we just pillar their face. And then light up for one mana, hope to find some creatures. All the plus one counters going to waste, sadly. Helix Shock, so we're getting close to burning them out. Or we could take out Liliana. This is five, we have a Ramana Pruins, so I think we just go face. And then I don't even have to do it now. And then I guess we'll just play a Sacred Foundry from hand, which they can make us discard for their benefit. So our opponent's at a virtual one life. Nothing to discard here. Both cards are in exile. And Hypnotic Spectre's fine. So we're on the burn plan. And a shock will do it. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. No real card advantage, so we'll hopefully draw into a line of the stage or showdown of the skulls. But a nice aggressive start for now. Facing a snow covered forest into Jasper Sentinel, so another elf deck. There's the showdown. So, don't really feel the need to shock this Sentinel. Although, it does block my Soul Skirmage. I guess we can attack. And if they block, I guess we can shock their face, which kind of boils down to the same. If they take it, then. I get to leave up my burn spells for the opponent's turn and maybe kill a more important creature. Opponent takes it. And then our life total can be important in this matchup, so I'll just play a tapped Sacred Foundry. Clan Caller is definitely worth shocking. And a shepherd. Alright, so I'm just gonna shock the clan caller now, I believe, or we can wait until my turn to get the prowess trigger, since it doesn't look like we'll be doing anything else. Another soul scar is nice. So I just want to play the minimal amount of burn spells now so we can get more mileage out of prowess. So let me attack. Opponent probably takes it and we'll. Shock the clan caller now. And then next turn we can Helix plus Lightning. Hopefully find a fourth land for showdown soon. Now they could cast Collected Company, which is one of the drawbacks of not killing Sentinel. Yep. But we do have two burn spells to deal with most of the creatures they can find here. Alright, Marwyn and Archdruid, so we can kill both. And that's fine. So, move to combats. See how they block, maybe they make a mistake. Our opponent was going to get to cast at company eventually. So, killing the mana creature here... Didn't seem worth it. If they had a turn one Lanor Elves, it might have been a different story. And we're okay using our burn spells on the opponent's creatures since we know we have showdown we can count on to provide more burn spells later. Another clan caller. And it's time for Showdown, which also enables Prowess nicely. Ooh, next turn is gonna be juicy. Opponent hits us for five. And we'll be able to use the plus one counters from Showdown to power up our Steamkin here, which is very nice. First counter has to go on a Soul Scar. And then opponent might be sitting on another Collected Company. So what's my sequencing? I probably just Wizard Sliding their face. And then put counter on Steamkin. And then I can light up the stage, ideally find an untapped white source. Vantage does come into play tapped here. Could also go for Lava Runner to have another haste creature to diversify, but I kind of like going all in on the Steamkin plan here if it works out. And so now I don't need another counter on Steamkin. We'll just put one on the other Soulscar. And then an untapped White Land lets me cast another Showdown. Alright, that also works. Just empty my hand here. Another Light Up. Ok, 
counter on Steamkin. No untapped white mana, but we can Lava Runner. Into another Lava Runner. And attack with the team. Probably should have used the mana before casting Lava Runner here, but pillar their face. Another counter on Lava Runner. Spread out the wealth. And we can attack with everyone. Opponent's gonna be chum blocking even if they have company, and the next run Helix is lethal, but they're most likely just dead. So yeah, that's the power of Showdown plus Steamkin. And we could have gotten even luckier by finding untapped white mana for showdown. And attack with the team. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Allurus of the Dream Den deck. And we've got a nice opening hand. Plenty of answers in case our opponent's on a Spirit Dancer Aura deck. If they're on an Arcanist deck, things get a bit more difficult. And we do see turn 1 Mountain, so it could be the Mirror Match too. Version with Lurus, which I've also tried, although then you don't get to play with Showdown. Probably just hit for 1, play Steamkin, knowing that it's probably gonna get shocked. Or we could wait, play Steamkin, and then... If they try and deal 2 damage to it, cast 2 burn spells in response, but that's going to require 4 mana, which we currently don't have. So let's hit for 1, see if they kill Lava Runner. Alright, they shock the Lava Runner, that's fine. And then we'll see if Steamkin survives. The burn mirror match can be quite grindy. It's usually about answering the creatures. Spikefields exile Steamkin. But we have the advantage of Showdown, which the opponent doesn't have. But they have Lurus on the flip side. Thermo Alchemist, I want a Helix as soon as I get the chance. And I guess I want to hit my land drop here. Uh, Pillar can exile, which can be relevant against Lurus, so I'm okay using one of the instant speed shocks. To enable spectacle. Land showdown. So if we draw land next turn, that's going to be huge. If we miss, we lose out on the showdown, unfortunately. Another alchemist. We can double burn here. I think we probably just shock the pyromancer now in the hopes of being able to play Showdown next turn, so we don't take a bunch of damage in the meantime. Ooh, land is huge. And another Showdown we get to cast next turn, so we're chaining together all this value. Opponent puts Lurus in hands. Next turn can get back Pyromancer. Sadly, no creatures to benefit from the plus one counters. And then we'll play the Ramanap Ruins. So we have access to more burn later. Even though it costs us a bit of life to use for red mana. So it's a close call here whether or not we play Ruins or Untapped Sacred Foundry, which might save us more life in the long run. And then Steamkin will be able to use to our advantage next turn. So I have to shock before it goes away. And then... We only have the one instant speed shock to put counters on our Steamkin. But with double showdown, that's a lot of counters we can put on the Steamkin at instant speed. Lurus gets back Pyromancer. And they only have one mana up, so best they can do is Wizard Slining, deal three. Mm, 
So probably don't need more than one white mana, do we? Uh, maybe we do. Step one, play Steamkin. Step two, play another Steamkin. And if they try and kill it, we can potentially shock and response. Alright, it's the wizard lining, so that's gonna deal three. Untaps alchemists. So if I cast another shock, we get three counters between Steamkin and the double showdown, so that'll save it. And then I probably want to kill Lurus here. And then that happens. The one drawback is that I won't be able to use Steamkin for mana this turn, since it'll have three damage marked on it. But we can use a second Steamkin still. We still have a few options. But yeah, our opponent packs it in. We could also use Pillar on the opponent's face and then put counters on the second Steamkin, use that for mana. And we even had another showdown in hand. So yeah, this definitely shows the power of showdown of the Skulls, plus the synergy with Steamkin, which is what makes this deck so powerful. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. An early creature, some interaction, a bit of card advantage to get the ball rolling, eventually find a showdown. Facing a Gruul. Can be a tough matchup, although Helix does help. And they've got a double Burning Tree start. Into a robber, so very explosive here. The good news is that they're down to two cards in hands. So... If we want to be mana efficient, we want a Lightning Helix the Robber, even though there are some three toughness creatures in the Gruul deck. But I think it's worth it here. And we want to kill Robber before it gets to cast the Soulscar Mage it exiled. Another Robber. That's too bad, so they will get to cast a Soul Scar and they revealed Lightning Helix. So, opponent got their value, we get to Pillar the Robber, but not before Soul Scar hits the battlefield. Showdown's good at least. So I can Pillar and then probably want to attack just to enable Spectacle, even though we're not racing here. Because I also need my creature to survive to put counters on it with Showdown. Steamkin's good, we'll play Tapped Foundry. So ideally we draw another Lightning Helix here. Hope to dodge an Ember Cleave, which we did. We're at 10. Well, speak of the devil. That's an awesome draw, so... We get to play Steamkin and have Lightning Helix up. And now we can play defense a bit more. Helix at instant speed to maybe answer an Ember Cleave. And then Showdown plus Steamkin is going to be sweet too. Ambush. We can foil with Helix. Still enables Prowess. I'm okay trading for the Emissary here now. Then, if I want to save myself one damage, I could Ruins, Showdown, Lava Runner, but we might exile some lands here. And then I can always play Pathway. Alright, I'll play the Mountain for now. Play Lava Runner, and then I can attack first. And then still play another Steamkin if I like. Although casting Steamkin next turn 
is going to give me more counters from Showdown. And I don't have any other red spells to currently leverage with the Steamkins. I think I'm better off waiting. Opponent's at 12 with just our Soul Scar in play, and now they're flooding a bit. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. Alright, so we got to see our Boros Burn deck in action in plenty of matchups. And the deck is great, definitely like the addition of Showdown and Steamkin over some of the other versions out there. I don't think I could ever go back to a version without. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.